at round one of the Geico Motorcycle AMA Enduro Cross Series presented by Lucas Oil, we saw Cooper Abbott take his first professional moto victory. But it was defending champ Colton Hager who took the overall and the lead in the series point standings. Round two from Glen Helen starts right now. It's time for round number two from Glen Helen. It's the Geico Motorcycle Enduro Cross Championships presented by Lucas Oil right here in San Bernardino, California. Round one was a fight. Colton Haker went 1-3-1 to grab the overall in a clutch performance in that third moto. And Cody Webb looked good. 2-2-2, two, two, two. solid and consistent, but not enough to take down the defending champ. Cooper Abbott made his presence felt with a third place finish, third overall, but had a moto win in there. One moto two, the first one of his career. And Tristan Hart had some issues in moto number two, but he showed that he has the speed to contend in 2020. Some slight track changes, some modifications for round number two. And we're gonna go on board with our track preview with the Destry Abbott. So here we are, round two of the Enduro Cross Series at Glen Helen, off the gate. And then one of our longer starts into a Kind of a nice, smooth left-hander. People will be going tight. There, there's no one there, so I'm able to step up over that. First lap, you're gonna be going inside, besides the pro section, and then we're gonna go into the big tire double. This thing will really boot you. This is a technical section with a really abrupt log into the firewood pit. Definitely standing through this section. You'll see an inside, outside. The outside's easier, but a lot of the pros are gonna go the inside over a big pipe jump. Technical there. Back to getting back on those toes on the pegs. Over to another little tight left-hander over a tire. And now we're gonna get into the matrix section. That'll be a lot of good action. This is gonna be a tough section. You can see, made a little mistake there, slippery. Can't rush those sections. And uh, it's definitely about being precise. This is the one section you can actually take a breath. Into more of an arena cross, of course, with abrupt logs on top of the jumps, which uh, definitely give you a kicker. You'll see those pros really going fast through that section. This is a, one of the most technical sections here. Going into that rocks, trying to get my front end light, really carrying momentum, staying steady on that throttle. Back into that little step up, and now we're going into the pro section where we're gonna have three really technical K-rails. This is gonna separate the fastest guys to the slower guys in that pro class. And uh, you'll see I'm not rushing that. And this is another technical step up with a big kicker. And here we go, finishing one lap at round two of the Enduro Cross Series. Hey, Destry, maybe you should sign up and race and challenge your son, Cooper. I thought that lap was pretty clean. Here's the format. Daytime qualifying earlier today sets the gate pick for this first moto. It's a three moto format. You gotta be consistent through all three if you wanna get it done. And of course, the least amount of points is how you win the race. It's Olympic scoring. Here's Kristen B with our Geico Motorcycle pre-race report. Can Cooper Abbott back it up? That's what I'm looking for today. He scored his first moto win in podium at round one, and this year he is a completely different rider. He is racing with confidence. He's got some swagger, and he is attacking the track aggressively like a true contender. He said earlier in the day, after sitting on the bench for an entire season due to an injury, he created an awareness that he just didn't have last year. He's more calculated and more focused. We'll see if he can assert himself here in round two. Well, Kristen, confidence is earned doesn't just fall on your lap. You gotta go out and make things happen on the track and when you get the results, you start building that confidence and the sky is the limit for Cooper Abbott. This is gonna be moto number one of three. You see Abbott right there in the middle on his right, Colton Haker, the number one machine. On his left, the number two of Cody Webb. Those are the two favorites for this championship. They went one, two at the opening round and in the six minute plus one lap race, you have to expect Colton Hager's gonna get out of the gate just fine. He hole shot at Moto 1 and Moto 3 at the opening round. There's Tristan Hart on the 84, the Red Bull KTM rider. A lot of speed, had some consistency issues at the opening round, but he's looking to put it all together here today at round number two. 30 second board turns to five, it goes sideways. You hear the revs, they're coming up while the gate goes down. Good jump for Tristan Hart. And it's gonna be just enough. He doesn't go too wide. He gets the Fox hole shot, but he's got Colton Hager sitting in the number two position. There's Webb around the outside in third, Abbott in fourth. So the heavy hitters, one, two, three, and four, 
but a great opportunity for Tristan Hart, the new rider on the Red Bull KTM machine. And look, this team did not hire him to go out and get podiums. They did not hire him to put together decent rides. They want wins. And there's no question he has the speed to do it. And he's out front right now with a great opportunity with the defending champ right behind him. Through the matrix, triples up and over. And when this rider puts everything together, it's going to be good because Tristan Hart has the speed. He has the aggression. And no question, he races hard. He fights every inch of the track. And if he can put himself up front and get a win or two, I think that might change the feelings of his competition. They expect him to be good this year, but not expect him to be great just yet. But a win could change everything. And he looks awesome right now, tripling into that over the K rails. And for him, it's just balancing this track. There's sections on the track where you want to be fast, you want to be aggressive. And there's sections on the track where you need to be a little bit more precise, a little bit more efficient. And he is looking to balance that right now with a little bit of a lead on the number one machine. But for Colton Haker, you got to remember, this is a guy who has won so many races and championships in his career. He knows when to take chances and when not to. And right now, he sees Tristan Hart starting to pull away. Is he going to make the run at him and try to get this moto win or go the consistent route? Just be efficient, be consistent, and beat him throughout the day by putting together three great moto scores. Haker gets through clean. Abbott is third, Webb is fourth, Graffender is fifth. But the top two have somewhat checked out early in moto number one. Hart out front, Haker right behind him in second, pacing him. And a mistake for Hart, he's off the rocks, gets back on, continues to lead the race. But the lead that he had built in the opening lap is now gone. And now he's going to feel the pressure from the defending champ. And this is where Hart has to be careful. He's got to control his nerves, make sure he focuses forward. This is a situation where a younger rider will normally think behind them, start being defensive, worrying about the racer behind him with the championship plate. And if he just focuses forward, he might be able to open back up that lead. It's no question he has the speed. He was fast in qualifying earlier today. He was fast at the opening round, but just had some mistakes that took him off the podium. And what was once a tight race about 30 seconds ago, Hart has opened it back up. A lot of changes in the offseason for Tristan Hart. Went from a privateer KTM rider to a factory KTM rider and said, the resources are incredible. The motor, the suspension, all the different things that he could change on the bike, things he's never had before. And most importantly on race day, just having that extra support at the truck, handling everything for him, letting him concentrate on being a racer. That's been the biggest lift for him. And this is another rider like Abbott. If he starts to get confident, then Haker and Webb and some of the favorites, they're gonna start looking at Tristan Hart a little bit different. Instead of a guy who could maybe win a race, you might start looking at him as a guy who could win this championship. Here's the gap back to third. And Cody Webb was so solid at the opening round. He said he wasn't happy with his raw speed, but overall he was happy with the bike. He was happy with the way he raced. He was pretty solid. Had a moto win at one point, but made a mistake. But still, he has a championship pedigree that led him to a 2-2-2 two, two, two finish. Puts him in second overall in the championship. Might be a bit concerned here today, though. The first two... Hart and Haker have pulled away. He's going to have to find some more raw speed if he wants to contend for this championship. Consistency can get you there, but he needs to put together some moto wins if he wants to fight late into this championship. And for Cody Webb, had an injury a year ago, missed the 2019 series, and said it was hard to watch. Colton Haker, Taddy Blazusiak had a great fight and a great battle. Webb was at the final round to watch Haker win that championship and said it was motivating, wanted to get back and reignite that rivalry that him and Colton Haker have had for some time. You have to imagine that this rider is going to figure things out early and make his presence felt in this championship. But Tristan Hart continuing to impress out front, made a mistake early, but has cleaned it up. And sometimes a rider will win a race you know, with a little bit of help. Maybe Haker goes down, Webb goes down, you sneak a win, but this, this is a straight up win if he can keep it. Got the whole shot, checked out, made the mistake, lost some time, and got it back. Red Bull KTM's gotta be impressed with him. 
very impressed with the way he races. He charges, he sends it, he goes for it at all times. Just trying to find the final pieces of the puzzle to clean up some of the more difficult sections. And he goes over the kicker finish line and continues to lead through the logs. Trying to balance those emotions right now. For a racer, when they're out front, there's so many things on their mind. Of course, he's focused on what's in front of him, the track, the obstacles, the lap riders that are now coming. But at the same time, when you're a younger rider, a little less experienced, you have a tendency to think behind you, worry about the competition, and if he can balance these emotions, stay focused, stay disciplined, this could be a huge moto win for him. Not one that he snuck by, but one that he earned. One of the biggest challenges is going through lap traffic, and he does it very well right there. Three different riders he was able to pass in two straightaways. No issues getting by. And for Colton Hager, this has been a solid ride, but a little bit off of his raw pace. Again, maybe just settling in, letting Hart get this win, knowing that it's a three-moto format. Actually, Hager had made a mistake. Webb has now gotten by him. Maybe a little panic setting in. He needs to get himself back into second. Again, that three-moto format, you got to put together three great races. A third or a fourth and one could cost you the overall. So Haker will go to work, try to get back by Webb, while Hart continues to lead. And the trajectory for this rider is pointed straight up. Someone that's had the speed, got the attention of the competition and the teams and the fans. That attention it's turning into something more right now. Look at the lead. Almost two straightaways. This is the kind of race you take back to the truck. You go back to the team and say, hey, everything's right. We've got things figured out. It's on me to get it done. And when I get the start and ride how I know I can, these are the results that I can get. A little bit of lap traffic issue right there with one corner to go in the race. But he knows his lead is big. He checked over his shoulder. Look, he's making a mistake again. He goes down, you don't see too much panic. And he's gonna pull it off. Tough last lap, but it don't matter because he did the work early. Tristan Hart grabs the checkered flag, gets the big win. He starts the day on fire with the win. Cody Webb continuing with those second place finishes. And Colton Haker is gonna have to figure out what went wrong right there and clean it up for moto number two. Glenn Halen is home to this championship. Tristan Hart makes a statement in this moto. He's followed by Webb, Haker, Abbott, and Graffender rounding out the top five. Let's go down to Kristen B to talk with the Red Bull KTM winner. Tristan Hart with his first moto win aboard the factory KTM. Tristan, Colton Haker was knocking on the door. How were you able to keep your composure and concentrate out there, especially after on exit from the rock section? A little fumble, but I mean, how did you concentrate out there? Uh, my main focus was just to get the start, and I knew if I got that, the rest would come, and Colton was right behind me, but he wasn't close enough to hit me, so I was actually pretty confident that I could start sprinting away, and that's exactly what I did, and it feels good to get the first one out of the way. I have a feeling there's going to be more from Tristan Hart. This is the rider who is figuring things out right now. We'll be back. The 2020 AMA Enduro Cross Series is brought to you by Geico Motorcycle and by Lucas Oil. Welcome back to Enduro Cross from Glen Helen Raceway in San Bernardino, California. Cooper Abbott came into the season hoping for top fives, but he left the opening round with a podium and a moto win. At round one, I won my first Enduro Cross moto, which is a huge accomplishment for me. Coming into the first round, we never know kind of exactly where we're at, but uh, I put in the work that I, I know I've done everything I possibly can to be better, and uh, it showed in the first round. I'm super stoked about that. My moto win came from the back row, surprisingly, when they flipped the rows and stuff, and I think I got a little lucky, but I just picked the right holes, and I think within three corners, I was already in the lead, and. And from the back row, I mean, I was I was just happy to be in the lead, honestly, because I knew Cody, Colton, Tristan, those guys are gonna they're gonna be fast and they're gonna come. So I just tried to put in my own laps and, and pull a little gap, and then uh, towards the end, Cody started coming, and uh, I knew he was closing up. And, and it's it's always hard leading. It's definitely a hard part. I haven't done it too much other than uh, that first round, but. Uh, Learning it, and I was super happy with how I dealt with it. And uh, man, he was coming, and then he got around me in the K rails, and uh, 
I was like, all right, just just try and stay with him, and if there's a spot on that last lap, try and get him back. And yeah, he went down in the tires, and and I was right behind him, and I was already too committed. And in the air, I'm like, oh no, this is not going to be good. And uh, landed on his bike, both feet came off, and uh, somehow managed to save it and uh, pull off the win, which is uh, which is awesome. To be honest, I learned a lot from watching last year. I was Tristan Hart's mechanic for all of last year, and I almost learned more watching than I did racing the year prior. And, and honestly, I think that's a huge help to this year, is, is just kind of knowing where I should be and, and improving it. And now that I've proved kind of round one, I've got to try and prove it at round two. So that's, uh, that's the goal. I don't want to just be a one-time podium guy, and, and I want to do it consistently. Well, he's off to a great start in 2020. Grabbing that win at round number one. That's a way to bump yourself into the conversation. Let's go down to Kristen Beach. She's got our Lucas Oil track report. Well, Daniel, this tire section has been the culprit of chaos in both rounds one and two. And the reason for that, there are holes all throughout this tire section where the dirt should be filling the tires in, or you would think they might. Uh, the dirt has hollowed out. It's deteriorated. So there are large holes and gaps, and it changes every single lap. So the riders never know quite what to expect out of this tire section, and it has certainly been causing a lot of chaos in the racing tonight. Well, we've still got two motos to go for round number two, and I expect there to be more chaos on this Enduro Cross track. Welcome back to Glen Helen Raceway for Enduro Cross round number two of this 2020 championship. Inverted start for moto number two. You're gonna see Tristan Hart on the back row in the inside. Pretty good spot for him. He is the Red Bull KTM representative. Taddy Blazuziak was the KTM rider a year ago, not racing the series this year due to COVID-19 and travel complications, was not able to make it over, but wants to come back in 2021 and make another run at this championship. Six minutes plus one lap, and again, an inverted gate. You're gonna see Webb, you're gonna see Haker, you're gonna see Tristan Hart, Cooper Abbott all in the back row. And at the opening round of the championship, Cooper Abbott was able to get into the lead from the back row and go on to win that moto that he is so pumped on right now, and he did it in style, blasting through the field on the opening lap. We'll see if some of these riders can get through right now. There's Hart in the inside. Good jump from Abbott. Looks like the 27 of Wallace Palmer is gonna get the Fox hole shot, but look at Cooper Abbott from the back row. This is two races in a row where this guy has been behind the entire front row and has found a way to squeak through into the top three. In the last one, he got in the lead by the end of the first lap. Can he do it again? He's gonna go up the inside through that tire section that Kristen talked about. And he pulls it off, takes the lead. And in Enduro Cross, there are skills that you need to have to be successful. And one of them is making moves on the opening lap. And there is no question, Cooper Abbott has figured this out better than anyone else in the field. And he's gotta be having flashbacks right now because at round number one, in moto number two, he did the exact same thing and got a win, but there's one difference. Colton Haker from the back row is now second, and that's gonna be tough for Abbott. In the last one, Webb was able to catch him late. He was able to fend him off for a while. Webb made the pass, Abbott got him back after Webb fell, so he got that win. But now he's got the defending champ right behind him on the opening lap, up the inside, makes the move. And that is tough for Haker. He had no room to get a run at that second K rail, but he pulls it off and takes the lead. Here's Kristen with more on the number one. I asked Colton Haker what he learned at round one from the inverted start. He said, don't follow the leader or get bunched up over the tire. It gets one line out here. And uh, if there's anyone in front of you, it's not gonna go over well. So definitely try not to follow the leader off the inverted start. Well, he learned all right. But the first round, he had a hard time getting through the field early in the race, cost him a shot at the moto win. But here today, he's able to get into the lead really early. And now he's got Abbott second. Here comes Cody Weber on the outside, gonna try to make the same move. Ah, not close enough, Abbott covers his line. Now Abbott's on the right side, his right side of the rocks. He's gonna try to defend that inside line. That's where Haker was able to make the pass. He drifts wide, ah, he learns, see? And if you're Cooper Abbott right now, you gotta take advantage of learning opportunities. Haker made the move, he was able to defend. Now Webb's still gonna get by right there, but every opportunity to be up front is a learning lesson. 
And he will take that back to the truck, talk to his dad, his coach, Destry Abbott, put it in the file of something they need to work on, something he needs to learn for the future. But being up here is how you learn. Hager's starting to pull away. And Webb is looking a little bit more spunky in this moto. The first moto, he was off the pace speed-wise. But he's been ultra-aggressive early in this moto. Trying to stay loose, not hold on too tight. One of the tendencies in Enduro Cross is to hold on really tight to some of the difficult sections. And if that happens, your arms will pump up. Makes it super difficult to hold on to the bike. So you got to keep that balance of aggression and patience. And remember to hold on loose. Not loose enough to where the bars pull out of your hands, but loose enough to where you do not get that arm pump. Carton, Colton Haker, sorry, starting to pull away just a little bit. It's a really good lap for him. And these guys, they look to put together clean laps. If they can do one, two, maybe three clean laps in a row, it can really make a difference. They can open up the space needed to be more comfortable. Haker just attacking that section. Keeping it somewhat simple over the tire. We saw it round one. Guys trying to jump it caused problems. Cody Webb went down. Abbott had some mistakes. But today, it seems like the riders are staying a little bit more patient. Solid lap for Webb, but he's losing touch with Colton Haker. Here's Kristen Beat with more. Both Colton Haker and Cody Webb are full dad mode this season. Colton has two daughters under three, and Cody has a son who is nine months old. Both told me that life has changed drastically for them this season. And uh, out on track, Daniel, being a dad, it changes things. You're a little more motivated. You can probably speak to that. Yeah, motivated is one of the words. Terrified also when your kid starts riding himself. And I'm curious if one of the young Haker kids or maybe Cody Webb's young son ends up being a racer. And I can tell you right now, from experience, it's all fun and games when they're on little 50s, but when they start jumping big jumps like that, everything changes. As a dad watching your kid race motorcycles, ask Jastry Abbott what it feels like watching his son win an Enduro Cross. Has to be a huge feeling for the KTM rider and his family. Here's Corey Graffender on his Yamaha 250. We're gonna go on board with him right now, give you an idea of what this course looks like at full speed. Inside line here over the tires. You see them attacking these sections. These are more the motocross sections where you can just attack, be aggressive. And right here on the matrix, got to be a little bit more precise, a little bit more patient. You see the mistake. Looks like maybe Palmer up there who made the mistake. Gets out of the way, lets the racing go by. And for Graffender, pretty solid race at round number one. He was consistent. Maybe a little off the pace speed wise of what he would like, but so far in this one, Top three, sitting pretty for a good overall if he can be consistent throughout the rest of the day. You see through the rocks, that is so tough. Riders have a tendency to hold their breath uh, breath through some of these sections, especially this one over the K-Rail. Patience, a lot of focus to make sure you execute clean and then you can get back on the gas, get aggressive right here over the finish line jump. Graffiner, of course, on a Yamaha 250, choosing the bike that he says works best for him. Cody Webb riding for Shirko. Huge commitment on his part to make the move over to Shirko. But he said he believed in the brand and wanted to make the move over there for a new chapter in his career. He kept some of his sponsors. Red Bull stayed on board with him and said, hey, you do what you want to do, Cody. We will support you. They have a great relationship. And they've been with him for a long time and sticking with him in 2020 as he makes the move over to the blue machine. A little bit of a mistake right there. And he has lost touch with Colton Haker. But remember, it's a three-moto format. And if Cody Webb could stay where he's at with one lap to go, he would be 2-2 two, two going into the final moto versus Haker's 1-3. They would be tied. It would be a runoff in that third moto. And for Tristan Hart, tough race. You see him on the leaderboard back and forth. So that first place finish was a good one in moto one. But this fourth might cost him a little bit in the points going into that final moto but he still should be in range of an overall if he can execute race number three. Half a lap to go for the Rockstar Husqvarna racer. A relationship that's been going on for some time now, both very happy with each other. The Husky guys, I mean, they, you have to be happy with Colton Hager, the results he's had. And when I asked him about the relationship with Husqvarna, he said, perfect, smooth, everything's solid. The bike's great, the team is great, the support is great. And that relationship has produced 
A lot of wins for the manufacturer and the rider. Look at lap traffic, makes a mistake, but that experience from Colton Hager, he moves right and makes it work. Step on, step off, grabs a checkered flag and bounces back from an off Moto 1 and gets the win, puts himself in position to get the overall if he can execute race number three. And you have to imagine he will. Colton Hager grabs the win. It's Webb, Graffiter, Harden, Abbott rounding out the top five. But the defending champ gets it done in Moto number two. Colton Hager taking that moto win. Colton, just a moment ago, discussing with your mechanic, Tanner, you said nine times better. What was better out there for you? Oh, man, just cleaner. I guess I got into some clean air. I wasn't uh, trying to chase anybody, and I just was riding clean. Um, yeah, I don't know. The red plate, it just continues to just haunt me at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't haunting him in moto number two as he grabs the big victory. More enduro cross when we return. Welcome back to Enduro Cross from Glen Helen Raceway. The pros are headed back to the pits to prepare for moto number three, but we're going amateur racing here at Glen Helen. Tyler Smith, Joshua Fout, Shelby Turner, Travis Griffiths, some of the riders in this race. It's four minutes plus one lap. We'll show you the highlights. And if you're an amateur racer in Enduro Cross, you are learning how to complete the track. You're learning the, the technique needed to do it. But the hopes of maybe becoming a pro you gotta watch out for Shelby Turner. She won the women's division, dominating fashion. I wouldn't be surprised if she gives him a run in this moto. And when the gate went down, it was a huge hole shot for the number 316. That's Connor Kilmartin from San Marcos, California. Great start early. Shelby Turner right there in second. You see Smith pushes her wide a little bit. She makes a mistake, loses a position or two. But Kill Martin led this race early, had the track clear right in front of him, but made some mistakes right there in the logs. And one big mistake can cost you big in Enduro Cross. He goes down, giving the lead to Tyler Smith out of Simi Valley, California. Local riders made their way out to Glen Helen to give Enduro Cross a shot. Such a challenging course for these riders, trying to learn the balance of being fast in the sections that they are comfortable with. And then, of course, being technical and very focused in some of these difficult sections, like the rocks, like the logs, like the matrix. But for Tyler Smith, this opening lap has been clean. The 44 of Joshua Fout out of Big Bear Lake, California. Wheelies up over, pretty clean run through the tires, then it gets him right at the very end. And that's why focus is so important in Duro Cross. You can't let up for a second. This track will jump up and bite you like it did to Joshua Foud and his Yamaha. Shelby Turner now running second. You can see the lead by Tyler Smith there, opened up about a 10 second lead. And Shelby Turner was so fast in 2019, dominated the women's championship, won the opening round in the women's class, and today decided I'm racing amateur. I'm gonna give these boys some trouble, and she did early. But Joshua Foud was not done. In a podium position, but he wants some more. And Turner makes a mistake in the rock, stuck. Fout on the right-hand side, has to cut back to the inside. Gets that momentum late in the rocks, is able to put together a pretty good run up the inside line. Could have been more aggressive right there, but did not make the pass attempt. And with a lap to go, Tyler Smith, comfortable lead. Four minute plus one lap race for the amateur class. And here comes Fout. Trying to make the move on Shelby Turner. Tyler Smith again leading the way. And once Tyler got the lead, he's not looked back. A couple little mistakes here and there, but nothing to slow him up as far as lap times go. Very consistent. This last lap making some mistakes. Maybe getting a little bit tired, holding on a little too tight. But with two corners to go, Tyler Smith is in position to get the win. Lap riders are going to be tough on this final lap. Goes wide, cuts under, and splits the difference. And if you're Turner or Fout, you're hoping that Tyler Smith gets held up just a little bit more. But it looks like he's going to pull it off. The Husqvarna rider to the inside. 
got this thing in the bag. Over the finish line jump, and it is Smith who gets the win. Joshua Fout is going to come across in second. Shelby Turner in third. Probably the longest four minutes of Tyler Smith's life. What a difficult run on this Enduro Cross track, but he does get the win, and he is on the podium with our Kristen Beat. Tyler Smith taking the win here in the amateur class. Tyler, you had just mentioned to me the most challenging facet of that track was the, the tire section. What made it so challenging for you, and how did you work your way through it? Well, it was, when you hit the tires, they kind of kick you all over the place. And a lot of the time there's people stuck in it, so finding a clean line was a real challenge. Did you have fun out there? Oh yeah, I had a great time. What does this amateur class do for guys like you who can come out here and kind of experience enduro cross? Yeah, it just uh, helped us progress to a higher level. It always pushing us forward, so it's a good, good opportunity to get out here and have fun. Stay tuned, Moto3 is coming up next on Fox Sports. Welcome back to San Bernardino, California. It's round number two of the Enduro Cross Championship. 2020 has been off to a great start for Colton Hager, Cody Webb, Cooper Rabbit, Tristan Hart, and Kristen Beat. It's gonna give us a Geico motorcycle pre-race report on Cody Webb. Today is only Cody Webb's second day of racing aboard the Sherco Four Stroke, a bike that was relatively untested before entering this series. When we spoke earlier in the day, he told me that between round one and two, they remapped the bike, put an FMF pipe on it, the bike now with a better fuel interflow. He said his goal today is consistent laps to hit that target. He's riding conservatively. He's not hitting the triple. Only a few riders are. He's working on flow and predictable consistent laps. He just told me his focus right now, no mistakes, because that is what's been haunting him in Moto1 and Moto2, so now moving into Moto3, he just wants to have a clean Moto and salvage today and uh, stay in the points race with Colton Haker. Well, for Cody Webb, it's a work in progress. Again, teaming up with Sherco, he knew there would be some development needed on the machine, so each race should get better for him. But again, sherco has got to be happy. they got a great test rider, someone who's going to develop this bike the way it needs to be to be competitive and win races. He is in position to get this overall. If he can win this race, beat Tristan Hart, beat Colton Haker, he could get the overall, but it looks like his priorities right now are just staying solid, being consistent, and staying in the hunt. The board goes sideways, the reps go up, and the gate goes down. And it looks like Haker is the first one to the first turn. Does he get the Fox hole shot? He does. Cuts over to the inside. Look at Webb around the outside. Step up, step off. Can he get next to him? Ooh, almost side by side. Hager's got a little bit on him up the inside. There's Hart right behind these guys in third. Hager to the inside. Webb right behind him. Now it's going to be inside, inside right here. So no passing attempts early in this race through this section. But right after this right, it will open up. We go on board with Corey Grafter, and he got a bad jump and got pinched off. But look how he stayed with it. Just stayed consistent through the first corner. It's gonna come out okay, salvage a top six start. Cause out of the gate, he was, I mean, he shut down. It looked like he was gonna be outside the top 10. He did a great job in the first corner. And here's Haker out front. And one thing we've learned so far in 2020, when Colton Haker gets out front, he's unbeatable. Hasn't lost a race once he's gotten to the lead. And he has it right now. Webb in second, lost a little bit of time on the opening lap. There's Tristan Hart in third trying to rebound after a somewhat of a tough second moto for him. Remember, he was the winner of our first moto. Not only won the race, but won it in dominating fashion. So he's in a way better position here for moto number three. But the overall is on the line for all three of these riders. Based on the Olympic scoring points, whichever one of these three wins this race will win this overall. And right now it's Haker with Webb sitting in second, starting to lose touch with the leader. Kristen? Daniel, notice the triple. It has an awkward kind of roller before it. The riders have told me it can throw you off, which is why you don't see a whole lot of guys hitting the triple. They were hitting it in practice. They were hitting it in qualifying. And if they need the time on a lap, you can see Tristan and Cooper Abbott kind of playing around with it. But not a lot of rider riders hitting that triple. Yeah, it's a tough section. I think when the track is clean and the conditions are perfect, it's something that some of these riders are willing to try. I talked to Cody Webb. He said it's not an obstacle that he's willing to do right now, not while he's still developing this bike. And he had a good straightaway right there. He caught right back up to Colton Hager. You see the ruts forming, though. When those ruts dig out, they get into the bottom of that log. It makes it have a huge kicker. So that triple, I think, again, as the track deteriorates, 
It's an obstacle these guys are not willing to try later in the day and later in these races. Tristan Hart, solidly in third right now. Nobody pressuring him from behind. He's able to focus strictly on the rider in front of him. Sometimes you get into a battle and you gotta worry about what's in front of you and behind you. With him, there is no pressure. So he just has to focus on Cody Webb and find a place around him. Two different riding styles, Cody Webb and Tristan Hart. Hart, more like Haker, willing to go for it. Really aggressive. Throws down in all the easy sections and then powers through the difficult sections where Webb, more of a tactician, gets through the difficult sections clean and loses a little bit of time on some of these fast sections. Look at Hart up the inside. When you go inside, inside on the K rail, it makes it super difficult, but if you wanna make the pass, you gotta take a chance. And he does up the inside, they're side by side. Webb not backing off though, staying focused in front of him. But he's on the outside, now nah, it works. Hart had to back off right there and settle in, but now Webb makes a mistake. And due diligence will pay off. Tristan Hart fought hard for about a straightaway and a half and finally makes the pass. And now he can set his sights on the number one machine of Colton Hager, but he's got some ground to make up. It's been a long, tough day for these riders. You see the way they ride Endurocross. They stand a lot. Takes a lot of leg strength, a lot of back strength. And we're late here in moto number three. It's been a long day practicing and qualifying and racing. This is where you gotta dig deep. Lap riders come into play late in the race, moving obstacles. For Colton Haker, continuing his run at the front, when he's out front with that clear track, he knows what to do with leads. I mean, this is a guy who has a resume, with a lot of wins, a lot of championships. He knows every scenario and what he needs to do in those scenarios. But when he gets out front, very focused, very strong, stays aggressive. There is a number one on his bike for a reason, but this is Endurocross. You cannot lighten up late. Got to close out this race, and the later laps are the most difficult. Haker has set such a fast pace today. Needs this win to get the overall. Tristan Hart knows that if he wants the overall, He's going to have to make a pass. He's going to have to close that gap. And for the young rider out of Canada, he knows that in order to make a move on Colton Haker, he's going to have to give everything he's got. It's going to have to be clean and efficient. But that is hard to make up the ground when Colton Haker is doing the exact same thing. Up the inside right there, you saw some of the riders drifting on the outside. Haker. Staying inside, here comes Webb, goes out to in. In a position to get a podium. I know he wants more than that. He wants to make a run at this championship. And after round one, he was three points down. He does not want to lose any more ground to Haker. Does not want to let Tristan Hart get into the conversation as well. Looking for ways to improve on this bike. Looking for ways to add more speed. And we've seen moments where he's been faster in sections, but until he gets everything 100% with that machine, and of course, continuing to build the trust that he has in his knee from the injury a year ago, you see him right there, plant the leg. It's gotta be building confidence when you know you can do that, and you know you have the strength. But this ride might be one that he looks back and regrets a little bit. He was right there and lost the pace of the leaders. And with one lap to go, a podium position for Webb looks likely. A win, not as much. Haker leads the way. Tristan Hart now in second, settling in. And it looks like Colton Haker might be grabbing the overall, and that would be tough for everybody. He won the opener. If he can go back to back, it's really putting him in a good position in this championship. These riders know exactly what it takes to win the title. They know where the competition is. They know how many points are needed. And if he goes 1-1, that's gonna be 50 points after two rounds. That spells trouble for everybody else. One corner to go, Haker over the K rails. One, two, and the third. He's gonna step up, he's gonna step off, 
It's a moto win for Colton Haker. It's an overall win for Colton Haker. And he extends the points lead. Round two of six. We are a third of the way through the title. And Colton Haker has not lost an overall yet this season. Tristan Hart, great ride. Cody Webb, great ride third. Benjamin Herrera, fourth. Corey Graffender in fifth. And a tough break for Cooper Abbott, running seventh in that moto. If you're the competition right now, you're going to have to throw everything you got at Colton Hager because he is taking care of things, and he wins again. The 2020 AMA Enduro Cross Series is brought to you by Geico Motorcycle and by Kicker Living Loud. Welcome back to Enduro Cross from Glen Helen Raceway. Round number two of the championship is complete. There's your winner, Colton Haker. But Cody Webb, the number two machine, puts in a solid day of racing. He finishes on the podium. Thanks, Daniel. With an abbreviated season, every moto has championship implications, and Cody Webb knows that. In that moto, allowing Tristan Hart to capitalize on your mistake, not how you wanted the, the moto to progress, but I mean, how do you rebound and collect yourself moving into round three? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think this is a great weekend of racing to take away from. Uh, we've really had pretty much no time at all on the 300 four stroke. So we made some bike changes from yesterday to today. And honestly, I thought the bike was working a lot better. But I mean, the track was super jumpy, not quite my specialty. But, you know, I gave my all. I had a lot of fun out there. And I had no idea that Tristan passing me was going to ruin my chance at second overall. But, you know, it's just uh, we still got uh, four rounds left in the season. and. I just want to build and grow and build, get some momentum going from here. So all in all, it was a great takeaway from the weekend. Really happy with how the bike worked and the team was going out there. And all in all, it just came down to me just not being quite comfortable on myself on the track and looking forward to next weekend. Great day of racing for Tristan Hart and the Red Bull KTM team. He grabs a moto win, but it's second overall. A nice rebound after round one for Tristan Hart on that factory KTM ride. Uh, Tristan, you had mentioned the errors at round one that were kind of haunting you, but today round two, a completely different rider. You looked poised out there. Uh, take me through how you cleaned up those mistakes. Uh, I put this gear on, honestly. <laughs> I really like this gear, and this is like my, this is my attitude gear, so I put it on today and came out swinging and didn't get the win, but we're definitely close, so I know we got the speed, and... Thanks to the whole FMF KTM team, the Red Bull, thanks to everyone. And we'll be back at round three, looking for the win. It takes good starts, consistency, and moto wins to get it done. Colton Haker did it today. Colton Haker with his second overall win this season. He had created so much flow out on the track. He was able to take that Moto3 win uncontested. But Colton, earlier in the day, uh, practice mishap. You weren't feeling up to par. Is the red plate a little heavier this year? I mean, the red plate just seems to be a little haunting and daunting at the moment, but uh, I'm getting through it uh, as best I possibly can. Have some good overall finishes, so pretty happy about it. But I uh, had a nasty practice crash, kind of shook myself, rung my bell a bit. Luckily, I wasn't hurt more than that, and I uh, was able to continue and take the win. So the competition isn't uh, isn't isn't easy. It's uh, it's stiff out there, and just trying our best to uh, you know I got to be happy. Two wins out of two starts. Stokes.